Okay, uh, we are now live. Uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, welcome everybody who's listening. Uh, if you have any questions as this goes on, uh, there should be a way to send your Q&A live during this presentation. Um, so this is our, if you haven't been here before, we have a hangout each month. We just give a tech talk on some iOS subject. And uh, this month we have Pietro Ria here. Uh, and he's going to be giving a talk on iOS 7 multitasking. He actually wrote the chapters on this in iOS 7 by tutorials. Um, so, uh, Pietro, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Ray. Uh, let me load up my, my presentation. Uh, can you guys see that? Can you guys see the see the first slide? Yeah, I yep. see it. Yep, that Great, it. wonderful. Great. So uh, this is uh, January's Tech Talk for 2014. This is the first one we're gonna have. Uh, my name is Pietro Rea. I've been working with Ray since late 2011. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about the multitasking APIs that Apple introduced in 2007. Um, so. Uh, a little bit about, about who's talking. Uh, I've, I've been working with Ray since last year, as, as I said. Uh, I have some experience with media apps. I used to work in Huffington Post, and I, I made, made the switch to e-commerce. I'm now uh, employed with uh, Amazon. I'm, more, I'm building e-commerce apps for one of their subsidiaries. Uh, I also wrote the multitasking chapters in iOS 7 my tutorials and a couple of other tutorials for Ray's site. All right, so multitasking in iOS 7. Uh, first off, why, why should we use multitasking? And even before that, what is multitasking? Um, so this is often a confusing subject because it really boils down to two different categories, uh, multitasking with users and multitasking with devices. So. Uh, users can do multiple things at once, uh, such as talking on the phone while browsing the web or listening to music while using some other app that's multitasking. The, the actual user is multitasking. Uh, secondly, the, the device can also multitask. Uh, it can do things in the background without bothering you. And this can be uh, things such as uh, acting as a low energy Bluetooth uh, device or or do something like background fetching, which is which is one of the APIs that we're going to talk about. So the so the user can do multiple things at once or the device can do things in the background uh, without bothering. So those two are uh, multitasking. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind is uh, the philosophy that Apple has always uh, adhered to is that Apple always prioritizes the battery life of, of, of the device over, over everything, really. So uh, all of these things take resources out of, the, uh, out of what the device can do. So um, Apple is really... Uh, the one that is going to cede the control over to to the developer or not, uh, and we're we're going to see this come up in, in the APIs. All right. So before going into multitasking APIs in iOS six, uh, let's let's do a quick run through over the APIs, the multitasking the multitasking APIs in iOS six. Um, so first of all is the background task completion API. Uh, this this was introduced a couple of versions back. Uh, uh, mainly it it let you finish up what uh, whatever it is you you were doing when the when the user hit the home button. So this has been used to uh, close up. Uh, to either finish upload tasks or download tasks or to close up database connections. Uh, as it turns out, this, this wasn't really, uh, this wasn't an 
enough time to to complete what the what certain apps wanted to do. So uh, the background uh, service task, uh, which we're going to talk about later, was, was introduced. Uh, secondly, background audio. So if you if you open an app like, uh, like Spotify or Songs or RDO and you're and you're listening to a song, if you hit the home button and go back to Springboard, you'll notice that the audio doesn't stop. And this is because all of those apps have implemented background audio, which is a multi a multitasking API that was present in iOS six and, and before. Uh, also, there's a there's a bunch of multitasking APIs that that have to do with with location services, uh, such as geofencing and uh, region uh, monitoring. So basically, if if you cross a if you cross a certain area, your your device will be woken up by by the OS, uh, and you'll you'll be allowed to to uh, handle that, that event. Uh, there's also voice over IP multitasking, so that if you're using an application like Skype, if you're in the middle of a call and, and you want to uh, do something else, you can press the home button and go to some other application and, uh, and do something else. So that's voice over IP. Finally, or uh, second to last, there's newsstand. Uh, the newsstand multitasking APIs were introduced when newsstand was introduced, of course. Uh, and this was mainly geared towards telling the applications that have a newsstand app that there's a uh, there's a new issue that that the application can download, so so that it can be downloaded in the background. Uh, finally, uh, I, I included in this list push notifications, which is usually not included in the multitasking API list, but I included because uh, APNS were introduced in iOS 3, and my theory is that they, they were introduced because uh, iOS wanted to simulate uh, background execution. So rather than the device pulling some some service over and over and telling the user that there's something new, uh, with, a, with a push, uh, there's a server that tells your app that, that there's something new. So, so you can simulate background execution. And this was introduced back in iOS 3 to, to, simulate, to, to simulate multitasking. Uh, now let's move, let's move on to the multitasking enhancements that were introduced in iOS 7, and there are four of them. Uh, there's the fast app switcher, which was completely changed. Uh, then there's fetching. The APIs for for uh, notifications were completely changed. Also, uh, silent pushes were introduced, which we're going to talk about a bit later. And finally, background transfer service. Uh, which is a new feature of the NSURL session APIs that Charlie Fulton talked about uh, in the last Tech Talk that we're also going to cover in detail. All right, so first of all, the app switcher. So this is almost like ancient history, but if you recall, the app switcher from iOS 4 to iOS 6 looked pretty differently from what it looks like right now. Um, if if you had a foreground app and you tap the home button twice, the foreground app would shift would shift upwards and show you a, a a row of icons, and this row of icons would include the foreground app that you just backgrounded as well as as the rest of the backgrounded apps. Uh, and you could switch between apps by tapping on on different icons. And just to refresh your memory, this is what the what the fast app switcher looked like in iOS six and, and previous. Pretty ancient, right? Uh, great. So the the app 
switcher in iOS 7 uh, changed completely. And you probably see it every day, but when you hit the home button twice, the app in the foreground, if there's an app in the foreground, when you do that, zooms out to show you a row of icons in the bottom. And in addition to that, it shows you a, a row of screenshots on top. And with the new app switcher, you can switch between apps by tapping on the icons or by tapping on the screenshots. And this is what it looks like. And this presents both a problem and an opportunity. Uh, it's an opportunity because uh, I, I think it definitely makes more sense than tapping on icons because you're not, tap you're not looking at the icon all day. You're looking at the app. So it makes sense that you tap on a snapshot of the app to go to that app that than, than tapping on the icon. But the problem is, what do you actually show in that snapshot? Uh, and that snapshot has to be kept fairly recent so, so, so that the user can tap on it. Um, and we're, we're, we're going to talk about that in the background fetching section of this presentation. Uh, something new in the iOS 7 Fast App Switcher is that you can flick up the screenshot to terminate the app. And this also kills all of the background uh, all of the background modes that that app was was running. All right, so we were talking about what goes on this snapshot, which leads it which leads us to our to our first iOS seven multitasking API, which is background fetching. So what's the motivation for background fetching? Uh, the, the users should always see the freshest content there is. Uh, all, also, the app switcher screenshots should be as recent as possible. So if you, if you open up any website or go to facebook.com, you'll see that uh, you will you'll see in your feed the most recent content. You'll never see old stuff, right? But before iOS 7, if you open any native app uh, that pulled data from any service, you would first see the old content. The, the uh, request would kick off. It would come back, and then it would refresh the UI. Um, so background fetching was tr uh, is trying to fix that. They, they want your favorite apps to look as fresh as possible as soon as you open them. Uh, so some possible applications for background fetching are social networking feeds, uh, news apps, entertainment, weather and finance apps, and pretty much any application that has data that continuously changes, so like anything that, that has any sort of feed can make use of background fetching. Uh, there's one catch, though. Background fetching is not guaranteed. It is up to the operating system. So with the APIs that we're going to talk about, you can only raise your hand and say, I would like to be woken up to fetch some data and do something. Uh, and it is up to the OS. Uh, it is going to go through some algorithms based on, on, the, on the battery life and energy of, of a device. And it is going to select the apps that it is going to wake up. So you definitely can't count on it. All right, so if you want to implement background fetching, the first thing you have to do in Xcode is go to the capabilities tab, which is new in Xcode 5, and turn on background fetch. Uh, next, you, you have to go to your application delegate and, impl and implement a, a new delegate method called perform fetch with completion handler. And what's interesting about this method is that uh, the system is handing you a completion handler. So when you're done fetching the data, when the data comes back and you refresh your UI, uh, you have to execute the completion handler that the OS hands you, and you have to send back the, the result of your background fetch. And there are three possible values of UI background fetch result. 
there's new data, there's no data, and then there's failed. Uh, and you also have to set in UI application your minimum background fetch interval. Uh, but the default one works pretty well. All right. So I, I prepared a, a, a demo to demonstrate uh, background Can I ask fetching. A question? Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, or should I save this for later? I don't know how you want to do it. Uh, either or. We can probably talk about it right now. OK. Um, so if I have an app and it has a background fetch implemented, and then it goes into yes. the background because the user is doing something else, and then it gets killed while it's in the background because the system decides there's not enough memory for it or because the user explicitly kills it using the multitasking UI, does that mean the background fetch will never be called because it was killed? So you're so you're asking what what happens if the back if the app is woken up during its fetch? No, I'm asking. Does the app only get called to perform background fetches as long as it's um, kind of inactive but in the background rather than explicitly killed or killed by the system right. implicitly because of resource limits? Because sometimes. You know, the app is still there. I, f I forget the names of the activation states that someone will, will remember better than I do. But there's in the background and there, and actually not in the background because it was killed. And I'm wondering if the background fetch calls come in only in one of those states or in both of them. Because that, that has so, a big effect on how much you can rely on it. So to my knowledge, uh, background fetch will only execute your application is, uh, or if your application shows up in the fast app switcher, it's not going to execute if it's not there. Um, so I've uh, I've encountered the the case that the OS kills the application, but it still shows up in the app switcher. Okay. Uh, so so when you tap on that screenshot, it's actually launching from scratch. And uh, in that. Case, would, would you still get background fetch requests? Would the OS kind of wake your app up in the background or relaunch it in the background just in order to deliver one of those requests? Right. So um, this is. I'm sorry. This is in uh, the weeds. Maybe we should save this for later. I, I was, that's just the question is in my head. I, if there's not yeah. a quick answer, we should get to it later. Sure. Yeah. But to my knowledge, if if your app is in your Shows up in the app switcher, then it's uh, and and you implemented the background fetching APIs, then it is going to be woken up. Okay. Uh, whether or not it was killed for other reasons. So let's uh, let's move on to the to the demo. Can you guys see Xcode right now? We sort of yet. see the top of it. All right. There you Great. Go. Yep. See it so the application that that we're gonna work with is called uh, RW Puppies, which all uh, all it is is a is a list of puppies, and who doesn't love puppies, right? So uh, each cell shows you a picture of a puppy, the name of the puppy, and the breed. Uh, and it's actually fetching data from parse. I've implemented parse in, in this project. So here in viewed it, uh, viewed it load, uh, it's calling a method called refre refresh with completion handler. And if you scroll down to refresh with completion handler, uh, it's, it's creating a query to parse and querying for the class name puppy when it comes back. Uh, it turns both those FFP PF objects uh, into RW puppy objects and saving it to the array so it can be displayed in this list. Uh, so what so what we're gonna do is use parse to simulate a backend. So we're actually gonna update parse, which I can show you right now. All right. So in the in iOS seven by by tutorials, I use NAMP, which is uh, which you can use to to uh, simulate a backend. 
Uh, right now, I'm using Parse because it has a really good data browser. Uh, so this is the data that RW Puppies is using to populate that table view. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to close the app. We're going to add one new row to Parse. And then we're going to use Xcode to do a background fetch for us. All right. So as I said, the, the first thing that you have to do in Xcode is to turn on background modes. So you click on the project file. You click on the target that you want. You go to the Capabilities tab, go down to Background Modes, turn that on. This is all brand new in Xcode 5. Once you're in Background Modes, uh, click on Background Fetch. Uh, then. Uh, here I'm, I'm, I'm going to the, to the application delegate, uh, which we talked about. So here we're going to implement a, a new application delegate method. Uh, let's add it to the bottom here. I, I have it saved, so, so you guys don't have to watch me type. It's pretty boring. So this application delegate method is called perform fetch with completion handler. Hey, uh, PHR, uh, can you zoom in on yes. that a little bit? It's kind of hard to read. Yes. Um, so I think this is, present this is presentation mode, right? OK. All right. So. Uh, all, so all this method is doing is getting the window to get the, the top view controller. And it's going to execute this public method. I'm oh, sorry to keep interrupting. Is anybody here. else having trouble reading this, or is yes. it just uh, Is it blurry or just too small? Too small. It, yeah, really small text. Uh, go to Xcode Preferences and make sure presentation mode is still on. Yeah, it's on it's on presentation mode. I think you need to flip switch to another um, another mode and switch it back to presentation. You need to go back and forth once. All right, let's let's do that. All right. Wow, that's, that's a lot bigger. Okay, you have to do great. For, uh, you have to do that for every new file that you open up, just so we can see it. Yeah. All right. So this is the application delegate method. Uh, so all all this is doing is getting the, the top view controller and executing this method. Uh, refresh with, with completion handler. And it is passing in the, from the operating system to, to the view controller that's going to do the refresh. So this is the. Uh, View controller that's going to do the refresh is called RW Puppies View Controller, and this this method is public. And it's right here. Okay, so so the so the next thing we have to do is once the once the fetch is complete and we have the new data, we have to execute the completion handler. So in this dispatch async method or function, I'm, I'm going to execute the completion handler. I'm hard coding in here the, the new data background fetch result. But in a, in a real application, you would have to check against the, the data that you already have and, and return uh, either new data or no data or failed. So once you reload the data, we're, we're, we're executing this uh, completion handler. All right. So next, we're going to add our breakpoint application delegate method to make sure that it's actually getting hit. Because since this app 
since RW Puppies, the app is going to be in the background. Um, this is the only way we're going to know if this. Okay, we're going to switch to parse and add one more row. But before we add one more row, uh, you should keep in mind that the topmost row in this table view is a Cocker Spaniel Lassie with name Lassie. So we're going to add one more row. Uh, so I, I have a dachshund named Penny. So let's add that. Penny. Hey, Pietro, before you get started, um, yes. is, the, is the simulator already running uh, the code that you just added, or um, is it, is it, because, uh, like, I, I didn't see you hit build and run once you added the um, completion handler. Right, so it's, it's actually not running. That's a, that's a good point. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, so let's stop and rerun this. Uh, so it, it already added the uh, the dog that I added. So let's let's get rid of this row. All right. Yeah, that's a that that's a very good point. All right. So let's run the application. It has the old puppies. Uh, the topmost one is Lassie. It's a cocker spaniel. Uh, now we're going to switch to parse. And add one more row. My dog's name is Penny. Uh, the breed, she's a dachshund. And I'm also going to add the URL that's going to load the photo. All right, so this is what, what this is doing is we are simulating an update to, a, to an API service. So the, so the service is done. And next, we are going to uh, stop the app. So now the app is in the background. So this is, uh, so, the, so the app is in the background. Uh, so in Xcode, we're going to go to the, uh, Uh, in, in the debug menu, there's an option. Sorry. So now our our app is in the background. Uh, it's in the debug window, but I think it stopped working because you stopped the app. You have to leave the app running in Xcode. Right. Sorry about that. Uh, right. So it's it's showing Penny uh, because I added Penny. So what what I have to do now is to. Um, Get rid of Penny. Or just do it the other way around. Make the background fetch update the deletion. Uh, sorry, guys.
right, so this is Penny. We're gonna I get get rid of Penny. Uh, so we we run the app. Then we hit home. All right. Once again, uh, we add Penny. We add the breed. And we add the, the URL. OK. So now, the app is in the background. You, you can see in the simulator, the app is in the background. Uh, in, the debug, in the debug menu, you, you can uh, choose an option. The name is Simulate Background Fetch. And we have a breakpoint here to show that this, this code is going to run. We select it. And yep. The, the breakpoint hits. Uh, we're we're going to let it run because we're we're not going to see anything in the in the simulator because the app is in, in, is in the background. All right. So now, what I'm going to do next is go to the fast app switcher and and see what shows. So uh, number one is Penny the Dachshund. So as you can see, the, the OS has woken up the app. We have fetched data from parse. Uh, we have gotten that data and refreshed our UI. And after that's done, we've completed, we've executed the completion handler, which has taken a snapshot of the application and put it here, which is, which is very important. Uh, so we're going to hit into this. Uh, and there's Penny. And that's the demo. Uh, so let's let's go back into Keynote. Okay. Well, background fetching is only the one of three APIs that Apple introduced for multitasking in iOS seven. the The second one was for uh, notifications. So. Regular pushes were completely revamped in iOS 7. Uh, before you you had to have a you had to have a server that would tell your application that that there's something new. Uh, then your 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 user would hit that hit that alert, and it would go to your application, and you would often have to fetch some data. And the data would have to come back, and you would have to refresh your UI. So there was a lot of wait time uh, in this old process. In iOS 7, uh, regular pushes can be handled in the background. So when a push comes in, you, your application gets woken up in the background. You can do your fetch once you once you execute that completer. Uh, only then is a notification showing up in the in in the in the in the user screen. Uh, so regular pushes were completely changed in iOS 7. Also in iOS 7, uh, there's a brand new API for silent pushes. So uh, so what a silent push does is also controlled by a server is sending a JSON payload to the application. It's waking, it's waking it up. And you can uh, wake up in the background, fetch new data, and reload your UI and call a, call a completion handler. Uh, so this is brand new in iOS 7. It's very powerful. 
Uh, some possible applications for sign pushes are anything that with syncing, any file syncing, purchase syncing, some apps that, that do uh, read later functionality can, can sync use and sign pushes. Also, anything that has to do with episodic content, like TV shows or podcasts, uh, from your server, you can send a silent push to your user's app to wake up in the background. Uh, you can enqueue a background task in the background, which we're going to talk about. Uh, download that in the background. And that's where you can use and push and background transfer, background transfer service at the same time. The only catch with silent pushes is that the, they are rate limited. So in the WWDC talk um, on multitasking, the engineer says that you can only send up to two silent pushes every hour. So that's the only catch with silent pushes. Uh, and just like background fetching, the first thing you have to do in Xcode to to implement a silent push is to go to the Capabilities tab and turn on the remote notifications in the backgrounds mode. All right, so what, yes? Can I ask another question? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Um, so you said that there were rate limits on uh, silent pushes. Um, do you know if those rate limits also apply for enterprise distribution? Uh, I actually don't know the answer to that question. Uh, I can look that up and and add it to the blog post that's going to go with this uh, with this tech talk. Okay, thanks. Just just curious. Sure. So uh, what this slide is showing. Uh, is the difference is is how uh, notifications have changed over time. So in iOS six, this is the the APS JSON payload. You only had the the alert dictionary and and the application delegate method that you had to implement. It was very simple. Uh, did did receive re remote notification. Uh, in iOS 7, the only thing you have to do to wake up your app in the background and fetch data is add a flag called content, content available and set it to, to yes or one. So uh, in your application, all you have to do is to uh, Implement the the new delegate method in iOS seven. Um, did did receive re remote notification fetch completion handler, and just as in background fetching, the OS is going to hand you a completion handler, and once you are done updating your UI, just report back the correct um, the the correct flag either new data or no data or failure. And that's and that's how you move all of your fetching of new data to the background. Also new in iOS 7 is a silent push, which has in the APS JSON dictionary payload, it has no alert dictionary. So this is not going to trigger any visual cue. Um, on the iPhone or iPad. So it's just going to wake up your application. It's going to do a fetch. And once you call the completion handler, um, it's going to tell the OS that you're done. So the, so the third API that Apple introduced in iOS 7 for multitasking is the background transfer service. And the motivation for this was that before iOS 7, large uploads or downloads often could not finish in time. I, I had this favorite app uh, called Docset, so which would download the documentation, the Apple Docs, to uh, to an iPhone or iPad. Uh, 
uh, but the download would take really, really long. And you had to keep the screen on, and you had to keep the app in the foreground for at least half an hour. Um, if you if if you created the app or if you killed the app, uh, the download would not complete, and you wouldn't have to start from from scratch. So this takes care of that. Um, also, the background task API that we talked about in at the beginning of the of this presentation did not allow enough time for the download or upload to complete. So in iOS 7, all you have to do to partake in the background transfer service is to create an NSURL session with a background configuration and then add a download or upload task. So Charlie Fulton talked about this in the last TED Talk a bit. Uh, we're also going to talk about it now. Uh, so what's the catch with the background transfer service is that the uploads and downloads are completely up to the operating system. Uh, if it notices that you're low on battery, uh, it's, it's probably going to pause the download or upload and, and not going to finish in time. So again, this is Apple um, protecting the Apple is protecting the, the user so to maximize battery life or energy consumption. All right, so if you want to implement background transfer service in your applications, uh, all you have to do, as I said, is create a background configuration. Uh, each session will have an ID, which will be a string. Here, I'll call, I, I call it foo. Now we, we create an NSURL session with this configuration. We set the delegate to self. Um, next, we create the download task or upload task, which Charlie Fulton calls minutes. Uh, and in iOS 7, all, all NSURL tasks uh, start out as paused, so you have to resume them to, to start out. Uh, after that, you have to uh, implement a bunch of delegates, like NSURL session download task delegate, NSURL task delegate, etc. What you have to do next is uh, is implement an application delegate method, handle ends for background URL session, and the same string ID that you give to your URL session is going to come back here in your application delegate. So if you identify this session as, as, as the one that you created, then you have to pass in the completion handler to, to where you're going to fetch new data. You're going to refresh the UI, and then you're going to execute the completion handler. And at that point, the OS is probably going to take a snapshot of your application. For the for for the app switcher. Okay, so we've gone through all three of the multitasking APIs in iOS seven. Uh, of course, it's not as simple as that. Uh, there's the potential problems. Uh, you have to make sure that sensitive data is handled appropriately when operating in the background. Uh, there's also some concerns with regards to privacy. So if you have uh, any banking app or the PayPal app like uh, Bank of America or uh, as I said, the PayPal app, if you double tap the home button, you'll see that the snapshot is blurred. So all of the finance and banking apps have that snapshot blurred. Uh, so anytime that you operate in the background, you have to be very careful uh, in the way that, that you access data because it's not getting back anymore. Uh, you, you have to make sure that the data that you're accessing in the background is safe. And there are some great WWDC talks that talk about this. So one last thing. Uh, I want to leave you I, I want to leave you with a question. Uh, what does the future of multitasking look like in iOS? 
as I said previously, Apple uh, it really cares about the battery life of of this. Uh, but on the other hand, it has provided amazing tools for a developer uh, to fetch data and update the UI in the background. So do you think Apple is ever going to let you do whatever you want in the background? Or is Apple always going to retain the control? Uh, this last slide is some resources uh, for the multitasking API in iOS 7. Uh, first of all, there's the multitasking talk, WWDC. Uh, it talks in detail about what I've gone through. Uh, there's, there's also some talks about uh, privacy and the keychain uh, and, and all the ways that, that you have to protect your user with these new APIs. And of course, uh, the chapters, there, there's the relevant chapters in iOS 7 by tutorials, chapter 16, 17, 18. Um, one of those chapters deals with the new NSURL session APIs. Uh, it was written by Charlie Fulton. He, he did a great job, and it goes in detail about how networking changed in iOS 7 and how it pertains to background transfer service. Okay. Uh, with that, I open it up for questions. Yeah, awesome, Pietro. Um, so, uh, you, by the way, you can turn off your screen share if you want now. Um, okay. So, uh, a question came in from one of our viewers, and by the way, if you are watching this, uh, there should be a button on the event page that says Q and A, and I think if you click that, you can submit questions. And uh, one of the questions came in from Fabio, and uh, Fabio, you can ask another one. I want to make sure I'm asking this right, but I think what he's asking is uh, if a silent notification comes in uh, and say the app isn't running, okay, will that wake up the app in order to perform your um, handler to perform some task before the next time the user runs the app? Yes, so, uh, so I think push uh, is, is meant to in the background. So if your app is not running and it's it still shows in the fast app switcher, then the OS is going to wake you up. Uh, you go through that uh, app delegate method and run that code. Uh, what if your app isn't running and it isn't in the fast app switcher? If your if your app is not in the fast app switcher or you've turned off the background modes and settings then the OS is, is not going to wake you up, to my understanding. It's sort of similar to the question I had, which is how much um, can we rely on these delivery mechanisms to work when an app isn't already in a certain state? Uh, I wonder about that. Um, I have a follow-up question. So this combination of the... I guess it's the, the remote silent notification plus the background transfer is very interesting because it means you can do things like they used to do in the uh, newsstand apps. You can deliver a lot of content instigated by a server to a device that's out there. The, the question is then, how do you verify from the server that it arrived successfully? Um, do you happen to know if, the compl if uh, when you enqueue this background transfer when the transfer completes if completion handlers are called on your app and if those completion handlers have the ability to do anything with the network like can can you set up a system where you have you know a hundred devices out there someone's in front of the server they send out a notification that causes them all to download big bundles of content um, and then you can also keep track of if it all arrived successfully you know parsed was validated successfully. You know, basically, you know, after a background transfer, can can a can an app do any kind of validation or completion handling after the transfer completes? Right. So, um, pretty much, you can do anything you want. Uh, 
before you execute the completion handler. So you can definitely tell your server that, that this particular user has the content before executing the completion handler. Um, I've never heard of that, uh, of that case, but you can probably do it. So you, so you could have a validation. You could you could have the app do validation logic on a bundle that was received through background transfer. And it, could do, it would do that validation right. logic in the background. Right, right. Uh, yeah. So anything that doesn't have to do with UIKit, you can do in the background. Um, you can definitely talk to a server in the background. Uh, you can definitely tell your server that you receive the content, as, as far as I know. Um, the background transfer service is managed by the operating system, mm -hmm. so it can split up in different parts. So if, if you want to know whether or not a uh, hundred different users got your content, mm -hmm. you would probably get, get those uh, messages staggered. Yeah, because um, it's definitely it's, not guaranteed. Yeah, it's not deterministic. Yeah, thanks. I have a question about the uh, silent push notifications, Pietro. What uh, you were mentioning about the payload that you can deliver. What kind of uh, is it like this typical payload for a regular push notification? Like, what kind of things could you include uh, in that? Right, uh, I I actually played with that in the chapter. Uh, the silent push, you can include uh, anything you want. Uh, the only thing that makes a difference is whether or not you include that that alert dictionary. That's what's going to determine whether or not it's going to show up in your screen. Mm -hmm. So the alert dictionary is going to determine uh, if it's silent or not. I have a related question about silent push. Um, you know, obviously, regular push notifications have a fairly small payload, um, and so you know, you, the amount of data that you can send can be fairly limited. Um, is it possible to use a silent push notification to send um, something that triggers a background download and then shows a UI local notification? Is that possible? Hmm. Yeah. So that's that's what that's what actually goes on in the multitasking chapter in the iOS seven by tutorials. Uh, I may so not have read that yet. You can definitely yeah. So you can definitely use a silent push to trigger a background download, um, and it would be very useful for an app that does podcasts or like TV episodes or something like that. You send a silent push trigger background download, and it's done when it's done. Um, and when it's done, you can tell the user by use a, by the use of, of a local notification. That's a pattern that I've used in the chapter, so it's definitely possible. Great, thank you. How reliable are background transfers? Background transfers, um, this may be just a rumor, but I've heard that if you uh, start a background transfer, if you delete the app that started a transfer and re-download it, the transfer is going to continue. So NSURL session is all about the inter-process uh, handling of networking. So once you kick off that background transfer, it's completely off your hands. It's a completely separate process. So whether or not you background that app, whether you kill that app, that app is in the OS's hands. I guess the OS does a pretty good job handling you know, OS updates and whatnot, so we have to assume that infrastructure is solid. Yes. Um, and it's probably going to get better in future version, in future versions of the operating system. Is there anything? I mean, is do you know if there's a lot of if people have figured out if there's anything particularly subtle that you need to do in the way you host your content 
to deliver large quantities of information by background transfer? Like, does it need to be, you know, when you configure your web server that, that's serving your 100 megabyte file or your or your 500 megabyte file, can you just throw it on Apache and everything's going to be happy, or do you need to make sure it's HTTP 1.1 and gzipped and this and that? And Mm, I'm, I'm actually not not sure if it has to uh, has to adhere to certain protocols or not. Uh, I would think that it handles HTTP pretty well. I would have to do some research and add it to the blog post. I'm just curious if there's you know if if um, if people have sort of noticed patterns about what tends to work and what doesn't because I think when it's a lot of material that's being moved over the background, you're going to start running into issues, and I wonder if there's a way to avoid them. Right. Uh, I, I actually had uh, all the background modes turned off on my phone because I wanted to get as, as much battery life out of my phone as possible. I turned it on to prepare for this talk, uh, and I was surprised to see that uh, the apps that I use most often did not, like, it didn't seem like they had implemented uh, the background API is introduced in iOS 7. Um, so it's it's hard to tell because when you're creating a product, background APIs is kind of like the frosting on the cake. It's not the it's not the core product. So I I was expecting the Facebook app to implement background fetching. Um, but I do not see that it's up to date in the in the step in the fast app switcher. Yeah, a lot of them are not. Even a lot of the Apple stuff doesn't seem to be up to date in the fast app switcher. I've noticed. Like I don't think mail is. I think messages is because sometimes you see it updating in front of you in the fast app switcher. But right, all the Apple stuff doesn't. I've definitely noticed that I've, I've noticed that the podcasts app uh, does some sort of multitasking API because. For my favorite podcast, when I open it, uh, the the new episode is always there. So it has to do something in the background. Mm -hmm. um, All right. Um, well, there was actually one more question, um, but unfortunately, we're out of time because uh, we only run for an hour on these. So uh, thank you, Pietro. That was awesome. And Thank you for everybody who watched this and for uh, all the guys who showed up um, on the team. And uh, we'll be having another one next month. I think next month's might be on Cocoa Pods. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so thanks again, Pietro. Thanks, Pietro. Thanks, Thank Pietro. Thanks, Pietro. All right. So uh, bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. bye. See you guys.